Hey everyone, welcome to Speech Therapy Education. Today's topic is Augmentative and Alternative Communication, also known as AAC. We're going to talk about what it is, an overview if you're planning for it, and some recommended therapy approaches. Let's get started. to think about AAC as systems, tools, things that you can use when speech is absent. Now remember, you can have speech without language and language without speech, and in both cases, I think AAC should probably be considered. Now, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, ASHA, <laughs> defines AAC as an area of clinical practice that supplements or compensates for impairments in speech language production and or comprehension, including spoken and written modes of communication. It includes manual signs, gestures, finger spelling, using tangible objects, line drawings, picture communication boards, letter boards, and speech generating devices. This is my absolute favorite part about speech pathology because the potential here is ever increasing. I mean, think about this. In 2010, the first iPad was released. That was just 12 years ago. And in that time, a whole host of apps have been developed to support communication and they're being refined as I speak. We also have individuals like Elon Musk, who's developing Neuralink. And if you're unfamiliar with what Neuralink is, it's a technology that is implanted in the brain in order to connect neurons and record the activity of those neurons. Essentially, you could control a device just by thinking about it. I think that's incredible, and it's something that we're gonna see even more of in our lifetime. If you're an SLP thinking that your client needs AAC, or if you're a parent just curious about the process, first and foremost, be prepared that it could take some time. The first thing that will happen is some sort of evaluation to determine the best fit for your client or family member. Once the device is chosen, ordered, and obtained, one of the first components of therapy is learning how to operate the device. How to turn it on, how to program it, how to navigate to the app, but that's just one component of therapy. The big one is how do we help our clients learn how to use their device or their system to communicate in their everyday lives? Think about how young children learn to talk. They are being provided continuous models from those around them. We talk with them, we play with them, we read with them. Now think for a moment a device is added into the mix and hardly any people in their world are modeling the use of a device. Ch children learn by watching the behavior of those around them and mimicking it. And if many of the adults are not modeling the use of that device, it's likely that they probably won't use the device very much at all. And this is, in my opinion, why a lot of devices fail. Not to be a downer in AAC world, because it's my favorite, but I have an idea. This goes out to all my app developers out there. I don't even know if this is possible, but I think it could be a cool idea because we need a better way to help model on our devices. So I'm thinking maybe a mode that can be turned off and on so that the communication partner being an SLP, a parent, a teacher, when they talk, those words are modeled on the device as well so that the client can see them activated. Again, I have no idea if that's possible. I just think it would be amazing. So fingers crossed that something like that will be added or something like it. I don't know. If you guys have better ideas, I am all for them. But on the SLP end, therapy for AAC should not be a scary or daunting task. It's essentially doing language therapy. If you go to Ash's website, you'll see a whole list of potential therapy approaches. I've narrowed it down to the ones that I think could be most beneficial. 
And since many of the ones on this list have multiple videos associated with them on YouTube, I'm just going to list them out and you can go and check them out. The first one is aided language simulation. This is essentially modeling using the devices you talk, which is a big go-to strategy. Discrete trial training. This one reminds me a lot of ABA. Milieu therapy, which is often used with young children. Core vocabulary, very popular in the AAC world. Language acquisition through motor planning, also known as LAMP. I am a big fan of LAMP. I love their app and I think it's fantastic. Mentoring programs. This is one that would be awesome to pair early learners of AAC with individuals who were proficient at them. I think that could be really incredible. And finally, the picture exchange communication system, also known as PEX. This is used a lot with preschool age children, especially for children and individuals with autism. If done correctly, results can be magical. Seriously, I am a big fan. I truly think that AAC is going to revolutionize speech pathology. And within the next few decades, we are going to see some seriously magical um, advancements in technology. And I only hope that it continues to improve the lives of our clients and our field for the better. If you want to see more content like this, please feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date with future content. Have an amazing day.